Texas A&M has pulled out of their college football bowl game. The Aggies were supposed to play in the Gator Bowl against Wake Forest, but between COVID cases and players opting out ahead of next year's draft, Texas A&M just too short-handed. Coach Jimbo Fisher led the Aggies to an 8-4 and four season. 5-7 and seven Rutgers is reportedly the first choice to replace them in the bowl game. Yeah, 5-7 and seven in a bowl game. COVID also wreaking havoc on the NFL schedule right ahead of the playoffs. This week featured two games Monday and two more Tuesday as a result of positive tests. There are more than 200 players on the COVID reserve list and the head coaches of the Eagles and Jets just tested positive. As a result of the surge, the NFL is, to mix my metaphors, throwing a major curveball by testing less instead of more. Joining us live from Arlington to talk about this is Dr. Anthony Casolaro, president of the NFL Physicians Society. Nice to see you this morning, Doc. So the world is testing more and more and more, and the NFL testing less. Why? So what we've learned over the last year and a half, and honestly, the NFL, like the world, had to learn to navigate COVID last year, and we did it pretty well. I would say that what we learned is testing was a part of it, but it was lifestyle changes, including masking, distancing, and being and, and being careful that made the biggest difference. Our quote random testing, which we uh, we did weekly up until this past week, would pick up a, a really less than one percent, a very small number each week. And I think in medicine. For example, if anybody has kids, you don't get a strep screen on every child every time you see them. It's you target it based on symptoms. And we have elected to target based on symptoms because we found that uh, doing otherwise was pulling, uh, I think had, did it didn't have the positive effects that we were hoping for. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that in medicine and in most of science, we try to, again, use the same approach for COVID testing and evaluation that we do in our own practices, which is evaluate the patients who should be evaluated. Now, remember, even though it says we're requiring less testing, it, it, it doesn't, any player can request testing on a daily basis and we do target specific players. Let's say it's a player who uh, lives with uh, an elderly or has an elderly parent that lives nearby. Those players can continue to test every day. So we certainly don't preclude anyone from testing. Sure. Two main critiques out there, Doc, and let me just surmise them. One from uh, Boston University Dr. David Hammer, who said he's concerned that this will further spread to perhaps players that do have uh, in particular conditions in the NFL or to their families. And the other critique uh, is from Michael Mina. He's an epidemiologist who said this is not setting the right public health tone to those outside the NFL. How do you answer those critiques? Well, testing shouldn't be the, the testing is not the solution. Testing is a part of our process and anyone's process. I think what we don't want to do is send the message that by testing you prevent illness. That's not what happens. What you should do is use common sense. And if you have exposure, be careful. If you are where if you if you are out in any risk situation to wear a mask and to distance as appropriately. What we've done is every facility now, we're all wearing masks, we're all distancing, meetings are kept in open areas. So I think part of what we're doing is similar to what we did last year. And honestly, last year, there were virtually no interruptions. Our team had no active cases last year. This year we did. And the um, uh, and what we found is as soon as we instituted distancing, masking, and, uh, and uh, more remote meetings, we dropped to virtually none. I think there's been only one since then. Okay, the big question here is, if this works for the NFL, should society as a whole be testing less? I think society should be testing smartly, and that's the difference. For example, if you are, I get questions if someone says, uh, you know, we want to have Christmas with our family, we're all vaccinated, and 
most of us are boosted. I would say have your Christmas holiday together. If they said, well, grandma has, you know, uh, is on chemotherapy, we want to be sure, that's a different approach. Perhaps some of those people may want, may choose to test because they're going to have a person at higher risk. But I think the solution is vaccination, mm -hmm. boosting, masking, distancing, and smart testing. And finally, uh, Buffalo Bills wide receiver Cole Beasley, who tested positive, is unvaccinated, had some real criticism to the NFL on Instagram. He said, just to be clear, COVID is not keeping me out of this game. The rules are vaxxed players are playing with COVID every week now because they don't test. What's your reaction to Beasley, who will not play in a huge game this weekend? Well, again, once the outbreak was identified, the, we do know that vaccinated players, of which we had 25, of uh, the first 23, two had, two, only two had symptoms that I might have kept them out of practice. But what we do know for 100% is that non-vaccinated players, their degree of illness is much more significant. And, much, and what we do know is that non-vaccinated adults that Cole Beasley's family may have been exposed to, including him, will have a much higher risk of illness and hospitalization. That we know. Well, it will be very interesting to see if this works. As a huge NFL fan, hey, let's hope no games are missed this playoff uh, season. Dr. Anthony Casolaro, president of the NFL Physician Society, really appreciate you joining us this morning. Happy holidays, sir. Thank you, you too. All right, we'll be right back after a quick break.